So we've covered a lot in this lesson, but we're finally making it to the string built-in object in JavaScript. Um, so again, let's come to the beginning. So technologies, JavaScript, built-in objects, and then you go down to string right here. So we kind of talked about uh, the string object versus primitives, got an overview of this, but what we didn't do is talk about some of the methods that we can use on this string. And what I want to do, as I've been doing in this lesson uh, all along, is basically give you the most important methods, the ones that I've used a lot myself, that other developers use commonly, and just give you a brief overview of them so that they're kind of in your memory bank and you have them for recall uh, later when you have to use them in your code or maybe some code challenges or interviews or whatever. So we're looking at strings and you can see there are a lot of different string methods that we can uh, use. And again, this little downwards thumb means that it's a deprecated method, so don't go trying to use uh, any of those. Um, but again, there's a lot of them here, and I want to point out some of the most important ones. So what we're going to be looking at, um, let's go ahead and refresh this. Oh, I don't know what I've done here. Okay, there we go. We'll clear the screen. And what we're going to be looking at is the replace all method. We're going to look at the to uppercase method, the substring method, the trim method, and the match method. So that's what we're going to be covering here. And again, just basic examples of each. As we go through these, I'm going to show you the documentation first because I really want you to get used to um, reading it and understanding how it's working. So let's go to the replace all method. It says, this method returns a new string with, with all matches of a pattern replaced by replacement. The pattern can be a string or a regular expression. So we just learned about that. And the replacement can be a string or a function to be called for each match. Now we're not going to get into that function piece. That's a little bit complicated. But if we look at the syntax here, you'll see some new uh, symbols here. So this little pipe means that there are multiple types of parameters that you can pass in, um, or not multiple types of parameters, because obviously there are multiple parameters, but for this single parameter, there's multiple types of data that you can pass in. So in this case, it's saying either a regular expression or just a string to match. And then the second parameter, so we have the comma here to say, okay, we're on a new parameter, uh, a new substring, so just a, a regular string, or a function that will return basically whatever we want to replace it with. So come down here to the parameters, you can read a little bit more about that, but we don't need to because I'm going to show you how to use it. So let's go ahead and define a string really quickly. So uh, we'll say my dog jumped on the bed. My dog is a bad dog. All right, and you'll notice that I have some weird capitalization in here, which is going to be what we're replacing. So we want to say we want a new string, and then for the string, we want to replace all. So this is different from the replace method because um, obviously we're replacing all occurrences of the match rather than just the first. And that's why I use this one uh, more frequently because in most cases I want to replace all rather than just the first match. So in this case, we could just say we want to replace the word dog with cat, and that's going to assign the new string to our variable, and you're going to see my cat jumped on the bed, my dog is a bad cat, which obviously makes no sense whatsoever because we missed one, and that's because this is case sensitive. But what we can do is write a regular expression, and we just learned about that, so we might as well do it. All right, so we're going to say correct string equals my string dot replace all and then in this case we're going to pass in a regular expression and then we're going to replace that with uh, lowercase cat so all occurrences of the the word dog uppercase and lowercase are going to re be replaced with this right here so in this regular expression we're going to put a character group and we're going to say we want either an uppercase d or a lowercase d and then we want to match exactly, so we're going to put these little brackets and put a one in there. So we're going to match exactly one of these characters, either uppercase or lowercase, 
and then we're just going to pass in uh, OG because it's always going to end in OG in the lowercase form. So then we're going to finally pass in, let's see, we need to pass in the global flag because we wanna um, replace or find all instance of instances of that. So let's go ahead and press enter and see what we got. So the correct string, it looks like we have cat in all of these instances, so we replaced it correctly. Again, this G at the end is just the global flag, and um, there's a bunch of different flags that you can bring into a regular expression, but this just means uh, match all occurrences, not just the first. The next method we're looking at is the two uppercase method. This is a pretty easy one. Let's go to the documentation and take a look. It says to uppercase returns the calling string value converted to uppercase um, and the value will be converted to a string if it isn't one. All right, so very simple, um, very simple function here and we can pretty much figure out what it does by just experimenting around. So we'll say uh, that we want my string to be equal to some string and then all we do Oh, it's saying I redeclared my string, so I need to refresh the browser because I already did that. So my string equals some string, and then we say my string dot to uppercase, and you'll see that it capitalizes every single character within that string. So it's very straightforward. Um, you'll see where this comes in handy in just a second. So the next one we're looking at is the substring method. I use this quite a bit. Um, if we go to the documentation, you're going to see that there are actually two methods. And if you have been following along with this tutorial, in the prior video, the 25 challenges, I actually used the wrong method here. So um, you can see that we have the two methods. We have the substring and then we have sub str. And this sub str has the little downwards thumb, which means don't use it. It's deprecated. And of course, I used it in the previous video. So um, apologize for that, but we're going to be using the non-deprecated method, and it says it returns the part of the string between the start and end inde uh, indices. So if we go down to the uh, function signature, uh, you can see that there's one required parameter. It's not surrounded by those brackets, and then one uh, optional parameter, and these represent the index of the first character that we want to include in the return string, and then the last character if we uh, want that otherwise it's just going to take everything um, after that first character. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Um, we'll use the same string here so we'll say my string dot substring and let's say that we want to get um, everything starting at I don't know the letter M. So if you think about this the S has an index of 0, the O has an index of 1, M will be 2, E3, the space will be 4, and the second S will be 5. So maybe we'll start it at 5, so we just get the second word. And then if we don't pass in a second parameter, it just goes to the end of the string, which is kind of what we want. But you could also pass in something like 7, and it kind of cuts it off there. So that's kind of how the substring method works. Now, I want to provide you with some common ways that we might use all these methods. And one of the common ways that I've found to use the substring method um, is if you want to maybe capitalize the first word of a sentence. So let's say that we wanted to take my string, which is some string with all lowercase, and we just wanted to capitalize this S and combine that into the full string. So basically what we're looking for is this right here. Now, if we wanted to convert that, Here's what we would do. We would say, um, let's just assign it to a result variable. So we will say my string, and then we want to grab the first letter of the entire string, which is going to be that S. Now we're going to use that to uppercase method that we saw in the previous uh, method right there. And what that's going to do is it's going to grab that S, and then it's going to capitalize it. So all we're getting right now is a single letter. So we can use the plus sign, we can concatenate uh, two strings together. So now we have to get the remainder of the string right here. And the way that we do that is using the substring method. So we'll say my string 
um, and then we want to use the substring method and we want to start at an index of 1 because we've already got the first, uh, the zeroth index of s, so we want to start the substring at 1. All right, and then we can go to the end of the string, so all we would have to do is basically just leave it like that and we're done. But if you, I don't know, maybe have a good reason to do this, you could also grab my string dot length to get the very last character in the string as our bounds of that substring. So if you press enter and then you type out result, you can see that we have capitalized uh, this string or sentence if it was longer. So that's just a common use case of the substring method combined with the two uppercase method. And you can start to see how when we combine them together, it makes our job a lot easier. The next method we're talking about is the trim method. And this may not seem um, all that useful when we first start looking at it, but I will show you why we might use this in the real world. So the trim method removes white space from both ends of a string. Notice it says both ends. It doesn't remove white space from in the middle of the string. Um, white space in this context is all white space characters, space tab, no break space, etc. Um, and all the line terminator characters, so um, a carriage return here, but we don't need to worry about that. And the uh, call signature, the function signature is very simple. You just call it on the string and it removes the white space. So again, you might say, well, this is not very useful, but what if we got some external data that looked like this? So this might be some data that you retrieved from an external database or something, and you have no control over how you receive it. And in this case, we have some spaces um, in these strings. So how would we go about removing those and returning an object that has uh, kind of a cleaned up um, piece of data? Well, we can do that using a loop and the trim method. So let's just write a loop a for loop, so we did this a lot in the challenges, the code challenges from the last lesson, and then we also um, learned it in the last lesson, so you should be familiar with this. So we're gonna write the loop, um, I++. Now we're gonna loop through each piece of data, and what I'm gonna do is actually break this out. So I'm gonna say the current title is gonna be equal to external data, then we're gonna grab the index that we're on, dot title, and then we're gonna go down and we're going to grab the current author equals external data i dot author. Now we're coming down here, and this is where we're going to uh, reassign the values of these properties to the trimmed version of them. So we're just gonna say the external data i dot title is going to be equal to the current title dot trim. So it's going to trim the white space and assign it back to that property. And then we'll do the same thing for the author. So external data dot author equals the current author that we're iterating over dot trim. And there's our for loop. So if we print out external data and we look at the array here, you're gonna see that all of these values have been trimmed of the white space. So that's just um, a way that I've used it in the past, um, something that has come in handy for me, so I just wanted to show you that method for that reason. Now the final method that we're gonna look at, the built-in method on a string object, is the match method. Now this is gonna be very familiar to you because we learned about regular expressions already. So I'm gonna actually bring in something that we've already looked at here. So let's write a regular expression, and we'll just say we want to match uh, any lowercase characters in a quantity of one or more. And that's going to be our regular expression. And then our string is going to just be a bunch of gibberish. Let's write this correctly. A bunch of gibberish, and then maybe some numbers in here, and then some more gibberish letters. All right, so there's our string. And there are actually two ways that we can test this. The first way is something we've already seen where we just run the exec method on the string. And of course, since we're matching lowercase letters in a quantity of one or more, it's gonna grab all of these until it gets to the numbers and then it no longer matches. So that's one way we could do it. 
but we can also do it in reverse. Like it does the same exact thing, except we're doing it from the string method. So all we have to do is say string.match, and then we pass in the regular expression, and it's going to show us kind of the same thing. Now, this is going to be exactly the same as long as you are not using the global flag. So if we were to put in, um, let's say, you know, if we defined the regular expression and we put in A to Z, you know, one or more, and then we put this global flag in there, that would be when these two methods do not behave identical. But for our intents and purposes, you can use either one. It really doesn't matter. Just pick one and go with it. And that's it for strings. In the next part of this lesson, we're going to be talking about uh, different built-in array methods, which is going to come in handy uh, pretty much for everything that you do in programming. So let's get to it.